scratchy head. Hello, we're filming a video. You've got to concentrate, okay? No, no, no scratching. <laughs> okay, let me get your itch. Let me scratch it for you. Where is it? Is it here? Is it here behind your ear? Is that the scratchy spot? Okay, are you happy now? Mwah. Good boy, okay. You ready? I mean, I think he is just going to be scratching, but anyway, hello everybody, I hope you're all doing well. For my beginner series, I thought, you know what, one video that I don't think I've really done properly is a how to clean tack. Now, even if you're not a beginner, this is your message today, to clean your tack. If you have tack, clean it, because if you're like me, I feel like actually my tack isn't too bad. It's been, it was cleaned about a week ago. Now you're supposed to clean your tack after every single ride. Now, I know that isn't very realistic for a lot of people. So I'm gonna be talking number one about the things that you should probably clean after every ride. Now, girth. That is number one, probably one of the most important because this is, this is the area where a horse gets sweaty. If your horse has been working hard, you know, because especially Joey, he often gets like little, you can even see, I haven't cleaned it since I've last ridden. There's like little kind of sweaty parts on it. Yes, okay. So I've got a very nosy Cremello here who has just seemed to join us after a sort of head scratching. Um, but anyway, yeah, really important to clean their girth because you don't want to sort of get um, rubs and things, especially where it's all sweaty. And number two, is if your horse is ridden in a bit, I know some people have bitless bridles and things, um, is to clean your bit because this goes in your horse's mouth. If it's all dirty and slobbery and things and you just leave it like that and the next time, you know, it goes in your horse's mouth, probably isn't gonna taste very nice. It's probably gonna be just a bit grimy. It's just a bit nasty really. So um, I always wash off my horse's bit with some water, obviously. Did not do that last time for today's purposes for demonstrating. Um, but first, when it comes to cat tack cleaning, I thought I would teach you how to clean a saddle, then we'll go into the bridle because I can't lie, especially if you're new to horses, this can all look quite confusing. You know, there's lots of different buckles and straps and everything. So um, we'll go on to cleaning the saddle first. But before that, I've got my sort of tack cleaning things here that I'm going to go through. So um, you don't really need too much when it comes to tack cleaning. Uh, Mickey, <laughs> that is very rude. He is jealous and wants to be part of the video. Okay, you just lick my hand. Um, so I have some water. You can use water in a little bowl or a little bucket like I have here. Or if you're at a sink, you can use like tap water or a hose. I find it easiest being in a bucket just so it's easily accessible. I also, um, this is my little tack cleaning kit by my sponsors, Voltaire Design. Um, which is where all my sort of tack is from, if you're wondering. But um, I have two things here. Now I know there's lots of different sort of tack cleaners and things in the market. Some people really like tack cleaners that come in like a spray bottle, so you kind of just spray it on. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of those. I prefer to use water, because I often find you can get a lot of the dirt off with just water. And then um, this is saddle soap in this little one. And then all you need to do once you have a damp sponge, now you don't want your sponge to be too wet because water and leather is kind of like a big no-no. So if you ever ride at the beach, especially with salt water, or if your tack ever gets wet, maybe you've gone cross country or you've gone for a hack and you go through a river or a lake or I don't know, something like that, or it rains, that is a good time to clean your tack. That is one of the exceptions where I'm like, yeah, I mean, you're supposed to clean it every time, like I said, but not everybody does that. So anyway, um, you get yourself a sponge or a rag or some sort of cloth. I prefer to use a sponge just because they're quite absorbent and then I can kind of squeeze a bit of the water out. Thank you, Mickey, for the kisses. Um, so it's just like a little bit damp. Um, so I'm gonna head over to my saddle now. Oh my goodness, that is my cap. Thank you, Mickey. Oh, <laughs> just as I've moved my saddle into shots so I can show you me cleaning it, Mickey has had a wee. Oh, he's finished now. Good boy. Good wee wees. Anyway, so um, I'm now here with my saddle to show you how I clean it. Again, this is like kind of like the way I clean it. Obviously, there are people that have different techniques and things, but this is kind of what works for me. And I'm pretty sure this is like kind of the method I was taught by my pony club back in the day. So anyway, I have my damp sponge. Um, what I like to do is just very lightly rub it on my saddle and basically 
give it a clean. Ah, uh, Mickey, that is my saddle. I might need to move this across a little bit because if he knocks this over or takes a chunk out of it, ooh, I will be in trouble. Anyway, um, and then um, just damply kind of wipe it on and get rid of any of the dust. Now, what you're supposed to do is kind of wipe it all over and get all the dampness off. But if you're like me and you live a busy life, there is the alternative version, which is instead of going round with a damp cloth and then going round with your saddle soap, what I do is I do damp cloth kind of like on all the areas where it comes off easily. And then um, also it's probably a good idea, which I should have done to start with, to take your stirrups off. Again, if you're lazy like me, um, sometimes going around the stirrups is easier, but if you want to do a full on deep clean and do it properly, which I'm going to be doing today, take your stirrups off. So just do that now. Um, that's quite self-explanatory. You literally just undo the buckle. So I'll take those off. Mickey, you really are giving me a good old clean. I think he probably thinks he's helping out by giving me a lick on my leg, when actually I think you're just making me a bit dirt. M Michael, it's not for Mickey's to play with. No. You're just making my life difficult, aren't you? You little practical joker. Oh, maybe I should take my stirrups off more often. There we go. That is Duke screaming. <laughs> so there we go, my saddle is now stirrupless. You can kind of see the areas that get the most grimy. I'd say it's probably this bit here underneath where the stirrups lie or kind of on the knee roll as well. So what I will do is every now and again, just clean my sponge, get rid of any of the dust that was maybe on it from the saddle. And then in, once you've kind of gone, okay, I really need to move this out of your way, Michael. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that was lucky I had my hand on it. Um, I might just keep a hand on it just in case. <laughs> Once the saddle is, um, you've kind of gone over with a damp sponge, then um, this is why I find saddle soap so much better because I find you just, it, I have had this for at least a year, I want to say, and that is how much I've got through. Definitely not because I should clean my tack more often, but also it does just last a long time. Also, I find the ones in like a spray bottle can sometimes be a bit like tacky or a bit like kind of sticky. I don't know how else to, to describe it. So once you have done all your damp sponging, um, add a little bit of soap to it. And then um, on the areas where it's really grimy and you just need a little bit of extra help, that's when I use my saddle soap. And then once you have done all of that, uh, rinse your sponge off with some water. Of course, if your tack is really dirty, clean your water if it does get dirty as well, because you might need to give it a bit of a freshen up. And then um, go over all the bits where you use the soap just to make sure that's all rinsed off and there's no sort of soap residue left on your saddle. Now, again, you kind of want you to not use much water, use the least amount of water as possible. Sometimes, you know, if you've been out in the mud, like here in England, and your saddle does have like mud splats all over it, then you're probably gonna have to use a bit more water. So I am just going to do that now and do that on both sides. Time-lapse time. All right, I'm back. Also, if you're enjoying today's video, please hit the subscribe button as it really does mean a lot to me. Anyway, um, next thing on the agenda when it comes to cleaning your saddle, once it's dry, even though I feel like the heaven, heavens have just opened and it is just starting to rain, which isn't the best, but it does look like, it looks like it's gonna pass. It's gonna be all right. Next, I have some leather conditioner here. Oh, Mickey says that smells nice. It's given that a right old whiff. I mean, I can't lie, it does smell really nice. I don't even know how I'd describe it, but maybe like cocoa butter? I don't know, it does smell very good. Um, you just want to get a tiny little bit on your sponge. I even sometimes wipe off a little bit. Um, now never, this is like a top tip of mine. If you have a sponge that you've just dipped in your leather conditioner, never go straight onto the seat. Um, if you're wondering about parts of the saddle, we have the pommel, which is the front bit, the cantle at the back, and then we have a little D-ring here. Um, anyway bits of the saddle for you there. 
never put it directly on here. I always kind of put it somewhere where it doesn't really matter too much if it's a little bit too kind of like slippery maybe. Um, just because I always find once I've kind of gone everywhere with my um, sponge, the excess that I have left on, then I go on the seat just because you really don't want the seat to be too slippery. So there we go. Um, so once you've kind of done that, I find the saddle really does gleam after this. Again, I always find on the knee rolls here is where it probably gets the most dry. My saddle is almost what? I want to say four four years old now and it's still looking brand new so having a good quality saddle is quite important there we go also cleaning your tack regularly keeps it nice and um soft and supple as well Mickey, that was so rude that was the biggest sigh ever oh it was a helicopter Michael! Oh my goodness! That was a big fart. Now my saddle is all conditioned. That is pretty much it. Also, if you have tack that's brand new, you can get some special like tack oil. So I'd recommend putting that on. Obviously don't overwhelm it with the tack oil, but putting a bit of that on really does make it a lot more soft and supple, especially bridles. I find bridles sometimes when you buy them brand new, they can be quite brittle. So adding that to it can make the leather really nice and soft. Um, I'm just going to put a saddle cover on it now, put it back in my tack room. Cleaning your tack is also really important because while I've been doing this, I've been just doing little checks. More so, on, I'd say, on, probably on the bridle where there's a lot more stitching. You want to make sure that nothing is loose, especially your stirrup leathers, because how bad would it be? It could be so dangerous if you were riding around and then suddenly your tack broke or something happened. So always keep an eye out on that in case there's any repairs that need doing. Um, also, you know, when you're cleaning your tack, think about does my tack still fit my horse? It's important to have your saddle checked regularly. I'd say kind of every six months to a year, depending on your horse, how often your horse is changing shape. If you have a younger horse, maybe it's building up more muscle, so it might need its saddle being checked more often. Um, but yeah, I'd say at least once a year, have your saddle checked by a professional to make sure it still, still fits. Thank you, Mickey. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm gonna pop this away and then we will head on to the bridle. So we're now going to go on to the bridle and the first thing I'm going to do when you're properly cleaning a bridle, now again, do I do this every time I ride? No. Am I supposed to? <laughs> yes. Now you're supposed to take all the parts, everything, everything gone, all the buckles undone so you can clean underneath everything. Um, I'd maybe do that once a week, maybe a little bit longer than that um, but I do do like regular cleans of just like areas that uh, kind of like high traffic areas where that normally get quite dirty so maybe like underneath the nose band that kind of thing but today we're going to do it properly I'm going to show you I'm going to take every single buckle apart now I remember the first time I did this when I was younger I was like oh my goodness how on earth am I going to put this back together again? It does look quite complicated to start with, but I'm gonna be going through it nice and slowly with you guys on how to put a bridle back together again once I've cleaned it. And I do have like kind of like a method to my madness of how I remember it quite well. Um, also, some of it is just kind of like, if you can picture what a bridle looks like on a horse's face, you, you, you're starting off in a good position so I'm just going to undo all of my buckles now as you can see actually I'm not struggling too much to undo all my buckles that's when you know that you haven't cleaned your tack in a while is if you can't undo them properly but you know what I'm doing all right I've got nice soft supple cleanish leather here so I'm just gonna undo all of that is everything undone is everything undone I'd say everything's pretty much undone there we go. So I'm gonna kind of actually tell you what, to make things a little bit easier, I'm gonna put everything in an order. So um, starting off, we have the headpiece. That's the bit that goes on the pole, which is kind of like the area in between the horse's two ears on their head. And then we have the brow band. This kind of, if you can imagine it on a bridle, it kind of goes here. I'm going to pretend to be the horse. So there we go, it goes there. It kind of goes where, if you can imagine if horses have, have eyebrows, that's where it goes. So that is the brow band. You can sometimes get really fancy, sparkly kind of ones. So that's a little bit easier to tell. Thank you, Mickey, for your input there. Um, next, we have 
the nose band. This is a Caverson nose band, so it means that there's no sort of flash or anything on it. You can get um, nose bands that have a flash on, which is like an extra attachment that goes around their mouth or their muzzle. Um, and there are lots of different types of sort of nose bands, but I'd say the Caverson nose band, which is this one here, is kind of like your basic, your go-to nose band. Then we're gonna go for the throat lash. Another easy way to remember where this goes. This goes right at the back and it goes underneath where kind of like their throat is. So they do have names which kind of go with things, which is always good. Um, and then we also have the cheek pieces. Um, a really good way to remember which way this goes is, you can see there's kind of buckles on the top and then there's like, I don't even know what you would call this sort of buckle, but it's one where it kind of pops through. So I always think um, regular buckles on the outside and then the weird buckles kind of face on the inside. So there we have the two cheek pieces. Then uh, this is a nice easy one for everyone to remember. We have the bit and of course this goes in the horse's mouth. Um, and then last but not least, another nice and easy one. We have the reins. So I'm just gonna pop, tell you what, the reins I'm just gonna pop down here for now. We're gonna forget about those because I find if you kind of put them to the side, they're the last thing to go back on. It's, it's, it just makes things look a little, little bit more simpler. There are less kind of straps going on around here. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I've actually got some fresh water since cleaning my saddle because it was quite dirty. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just use some water to clean my bit. You don't really want to use soap or anything or much soap on it. If you do use soap, I'd say go-to would be like washing up liquid, um, but just make sure that you Make, um, that you kind of rinse it really really well because the last thing you want to do is have something that tastes horrible and then your horse puts it in its mouth and then it's like mm, you know what I'd rather not you want to make everything a nice happy positive experience for horses so uh, this one here this um, has it's metal all the way through and then has plastic over the top and the plastic is actually apple flavored so there we go um, you can get some funky ones out there. This is literally the bit that Joey's previous owners used on him and um, that's kind of when I first got him I basically got exactly the same tack that he was in before because when I first got him I didn't want to change anything drastically especially you know when I brought him home you know that's a big enough change as it is and then I've obviously had lots of lessons with lots of different instructors and this is just what he's happy going in at the moment you never know might switch things up in the future but yeah this is um, a full cheek snaffle this is what I use on Joey this is what his previous owners used so I just got the exact same bit as what he was ridden in before because obviously when you get a new horse you don't want to suddenly change up all their tack their life has changed enough as it is you know moving to a different yard making new friends and I've had lots of lessons with different instructors and they've been really happy with how he goes in this so oh thank you Mickey that's just what I use so I'll pop that over there okay um, again pretty self-explanatory when it comes to the cleaning it's exactly the same as you would clean a saddle um, go over you know with a damp cloth and then go over with a little bit of saddle soap on the areas that are maybe a bit more greasy or a bit more difficult to clean off with just a bit of a damp sponge. Um, I find especially the bits that get most sweaty, um, those areas are probably the areas that you need to clean the most. Um, luckily, you can see I've cl been cleaning my tack recently, it's not actually too bad. So I'm just going to go over all of my bits of tack with that. Some people have um, different sort of cleaning devices and things that they like to use. Some people say that if there's some areas, especially in between where all the stitching is, they use like a toothpick to get bits of um, dirt out or for example like buckle holes. Where is something that has buckle holes? Oh, this is the one with all the buckle holes on the headpiece. Um, you can use a little toothpick to get like bits of grime out of this stuff stuck in the holes. Um, some people like to use a old toothbrush as well to get into little nooks and crannies. I feel like that's maybe more if you use for like cleaning your saddle, but um, there we go. So I'm just going to do that now and then I'll see you when I'm back when this is all clean. Right, since I've seen you, I have cleaned all my little pieces of tack and I've also given them a condition as well. So now it's time 
to put everything together. So again, I'm gonna go nice and slowly through each piece. Um, the first piece that I'd probably recommend picking up is your little head piece here. Now, the way that I remember to which way round it goes, I'm going to pretend that I am the horse. You know, this is my mouth. This is where kind of, you know, the brow band will go. Um, oh no, Mickey, oh my gosh. Mickey, Mickey, no. Mickey, no. Well, I'm going to move my reins over here so no Mickeys can eat them. Oh dear. Okay, back to the beginning. Starting off, the first piece that I would go for is the head piece. Now, if you're wondering which way round does it go, that kind of thing, to make sure you get it all correct, I'm going to pretend that I'm the horse. I'm kind of facing the same way Mickey is. So, you know, my nose is here. My eyes are here, or maybe they're a bit more to the outside. You know, this is where my brow bound is, my little ears are here. So anyway, um, that's one way that I remember how to put things on. I like to pretend that I am the horse. Um, so starting off with your headpiece. So obviously all headpieces are slightly different. Um, it depends on your bridle. Some headpieces actually, the attachment for your um, throat lash is sometimes in a second piece. So this can sometimes be two pieces. Mine's just all one bit together. Um, so make sure you have those two pieces together if yours is a separate one. Also, um, the, I always find that the throat lash is often a slightly skinnier strap. So I always think have the skinnier strap at the back. Mickey is chewing on my belt. Thank you, boy. Can you please not do that? <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm going to put it like that. That's just how I'm going to remember. Okay, next is the brow band. Sometimes also on your headpiece, you have some sort of indication which maybe tells you on the top or which way it goes. Um, so next, I'm going to basically put the brow band through my um, headpiece here and make sure you get all the straps through the loop. So as you can see, it's starting to form a bridle. You're getting there. I feel like it's a bit like following, uh, maybe if you're following along putting a bridle together, it's a bit like doing Lego instructions. So um, we've done two steps now, we're on to step three. Um, step three, I'd probably say the easiest one to go for is the nose band. As you can see, this kind of goes over the nose. So I'm going to, sometimes if you have a hook, it's quite easy to hook it up, but I'm going to put it on my head. Or actually I'm not because I'm not gonna be able to see what I'm doing. Um, but um, if you think about logically what it's like to tack up a horse, you know that the nose band is, this kind of goes underneath all the straps, these bit here. So you, out of the three bits here, you want to go for the one that's kind of underneath. So I'm gonna do that up now. Also, if you've had a bridle for a while, it's quite good because you can see the kind of indents or which hole it normally is on. So um, if it is a new bridle and you're not sure, then um, best of luck to you when you have to put your bridle back on your horse to make sure that it's all on the right holes. So um, you never know. It might be a good idea to take note of that if it is a brand new bridle. If not, I'm sure when you put the bridle on, you'll be able to see if it's a bit loose or a bit tight kind of thing. Um, so there we go. We have now got, uh, it looks like a bridle now. You know, it has the little nose bit here, the little brow band bit here. Um, next, we're going to go on to the cheek pieces. Again, as I said before, normal buckles on the outside, weird buckles on the inside. Now the bit of the cheek piece, this is probably seems a little bit more simple if you have again, a thinner bit for your throat lash. Do you remember which bit the cheek piece goes on? It's going to be on the strap nearest, like the horse's nose at the front. So I'm going to pop that on there. And then um, of course do all my buckles up and then do the exact same on the other side. Again, the strap at the front nearest the horse's nose. Whatever you're doing down there, Mickey, you're having a great time. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. There we go. Now, next, it's time to grab your bit if your horse is ridden in one. Um, and the way to remember which way a bit goes, that's probably one of the reasons why I decided to use this one. I feel like if it's single jointed, it's a little bit easier for me to show you which way around it goes. I also ride Joey in a double jointed snaffle as well. I probably use that one more often now, um, which basically 
you see the little joint here, it means that there's two of them. This one I don't use so much anymore. But um, if you put it like this, this is a smiley face. You can see that it looks like a nice smile. But if you try and do it the other way as a smiley face, it just, it just doesn't work as well. So that is the easiest way to figure out which way your bit goes. So it wants to be a nice smiley face and then you just have to lift it up from its smiley face upwards and that's how you know which way it's facing. So you want to grab your bridle again, grab your cheek pieces and then you want to slide it through the kind of loop that we have here or the ring and then do it up. I always find the easiest way to, ooh, oh goodness I've dropped it all now. Let's make sure I'm putting it back on the right way. There we go. I find the easiest way to um, do these sort of buckles up is to slide it through the first bit of leather and then slide it through the second bit and then just pull it and then often it just pokes through the hole there we go and then it's in and then you're just gonna want to repeat on the other side again making sure that you haven't dropped it like i did um, or make sure that you haven't done anything wrong again just double check that that's a nice smiley face and then i will do my little cheek piece up And then if you've got this far, you, you, you're getting there. It's looking, I feel like I say this every time I put a piece on, but it really is looking like you're br a bridle. You're almost there. Okay, and then you have your nice little skinny, skinny strap. This is the throat lash. Um, some throat lashes are, um, you can't undo them on both sides, I'm pretty sure. My one, you can like adjust it. So I'm just gonna put that on. Make sure all the little keepers are in place because you don't want to be sort of messing around with that later. And then I'm going to do it up again on the other side, just kind of so it's out of the way. There we go. And then last but not least, I'm going to grab my reins that I confiscated off Mickey earlier. Again, with your little keepers like this, um, these always go on the inside. And I think it's because of safety reasons. When you're riding along, you don't want to have your buckles on your outside in case, I don't know, your horse spooks at something and you go through a hedge and then for some reason the keepers undo. You really don't want to lose your reins. So always have the little buckle bit, especially on these weird ones, on the inside. So I'm just going to um, do that up now, of course. You just put it through your um, bit and through the little loop there. Some bits have different rings going down, depending on kind of like the strength of it. So um, sometimes you might need to attach it to like a lower ring. Um, again, down to personal preference, what bit your horse goes best in or what sort of equipment you use. And then I'm gonna make sure that both of my reins are, have not got any sort of kinks or anything in them. And then put them across, across, across. There we go. And then you have your little buckle at the end that I'll just do up. And there we go. Your bridle is put back together. Now, um, a little top tip if you want to look like a proper little professional. Um, something that a lot of people do is if you undo your throat lash strap and then loop your reins through, it means when you hang your reins up, or hang your bridle up, your reins don't really like drag on the ground because they're kind of held up by your throat lash. And then sometimes, especially if you have a bridle with a nose band, some bridles don't have nose bands. Um, some people like to wrap the nose band around and then do the buckle up, especially maybe if you have a flash as well. And there we go. It's kind of all neatly tidied away, packed away. And that is how you clean and put a bridle back together. Of course, you know, when it comes to cleaning your girth or cleaning, what's something else that I've missed? I feel like I've missed something else. If you have a breastplate or a martingale or anything like that, it's pretty like exactly the same when it comes to cleaning leather goods, I'd say. Um, so there we go. They are my sort of top tips on how I clean my bridle and my saddle. 
let me know if you you know learned anything or if you have any sort of tack cleaning top tips i feel like everyone in the horse world always has like a slightly different way of doing things and there's always something that people i like people recommending using a toothpick or a um toothbrush which i wouldn't have known before since doing social media so that's always like a little good idea um, but yeah, if you have any smart ideas, let me know in the comments. I love hearing like little life hacks and things like that. But anyway, I really hope you enjoyed watching today's video. Um, let me know how you get on with your tack cleaning. Um, I always like to like listen to things or watch YouTube videos while I clean my tack. So if you want to listen to my podcast, Esme's Country Life, available on most sort of podcast streaming platforms. And it's also here on YouTube if you want to watch the video version as well. Um, be sure to listen to that that would be great thank you very much but anyway everybody um thank you so much for watching today's video if you're new or have not done so already please like and subscribe it really does help me out and i really do appreciate it thank you to mickey for being our little star in the background keeping things interesting keeping things funny as usual um he's gone off now i think he's bored he's decided that i do not have any treats but i will definitely give him some in a sec oh he had the treat word he had the treat word anyway thanks for watching guys i'll see you all next time bye Good boy. Well done.